One of the biggest concerns that I hear from people over the age of 50 and honestly from adults of all ages when we talk about supplementing with creatine is this. Will creatine harm my kidneys? And the reality is a lot of folks, including many physicians, either can't or won't answer that question, even though creatine is one of the most studied supplements on the planet at this point. So today I wanna to cut through some of the noise and show you what the research actually says and give you some talking points to discuss with your doctor if you're thinking about trying creatine, but you also still have some concerns. If you watch this first video, you know that creatine is not new. Athletes at the 92 Barcelona Olympics were used it and it really hit mainstream awareness in the late 90s with Bill Phillips Body for Life Challenge. Since then its popularity has only grown mostly because it helps with performance and recovery, more reps in the gym, better strength over time, quicker bounce back between training sets and repetitions. More recently research has expanded into brain health and neurologic conditions and I suspect we'll learn even more over the next few years to come. But here's the straight scoop on the kidney. Creatine is a conditionally essential nutrient that your body actually makes and we also get it from food like meat seafood and dairy it's a critical part of the body's energy system especially in organs with high energy needs your muscles your brain your liver and believe it or not even your kidneys the kidneys actually use creatine to do what they do so when you take supplemental creatine some of it naturally breaks down into a waste product called creatinine and that's the number that most lab reports use as a rough proxy for kidney function and it's the lab most followed along with EGFR, your glomerular filtration rate, to give doctors an idea of how well your kidneys are functioning. If you supplement with creatine, your creatinine level on your lab work may have a tendency to drift upward a bit, even when your kidneys are perfectly healthy. That creatinine bump that's often seen can make your EGFR look lower on paper without kidney damage actually being present. And that's the root origin of the creatine harms the kidneys myth. But what does the evidence show? Well, reviews that specifically looked at kidney function with reliable testing conclude that creatine at standard doses three to five grams per day is safe for healthy adults, while also calling for more studies in patients who already have kidney disease or some level of renal compromise. A 2021 paper by Jose Antonio, Darren Kandau, and other researchers reported findings of an internationally renowned team of research experts assembled to perform an evidence-based evaluation of the literature and pulling together hundreds of studies involving creatine. And they came to the same bottom line, that in healthy adults using the recommended amounts between three to five grams per day or roughly 0.1 grams per kilogram of body weight, creatine has not been shown to damage the kidneys. In fact, if a link between creatine supplementation and kidney injury was real or valid, there would be a documented increase in kidney damage and dysfunction permeating the scientific and medical literature in low risk, young, physically fit, healthy individuals since 1992. And those numbers would be pretty astounding to say the least. But that that simply hasn't been the case. In summary, the research indicates that creatine supplementation at recommended dosages does not result in kidney damage or renal dysfunction in healthy individuals. If you're someone who looks at labs or you're a clinician who happens to be watching this, we know the numbers can be confounding. They can be confusing. And as a practitioner in real time, whether in the office, the hospital, or in the ER where I see patients, it can be worrisome and concerning when we see this. It can be frustrating to see a healthy appearing patient standing before you whose creatinine is elevated with no clear reason whatsoever. But in someone taking creatine, a modest creatinine bump isn't at all unexpected. And there are other tests that can be used to clarify what's actually real and what's not. In those situations, though not available everywhere, a cystatin C-based EGFR paired with a urinalysis can help guide whether further kidney testing is warranted. Also, it's important to note that the scare stories you'll sometimes hear about creatine are almost always loaded with confounding factors. Pre-existing kidney disease, dehydration, extreme high dosing, in some cases 100 times the recommended dose, multi-supplement stack, and even anabolic steroid use. And those scenarios just don't generalize to healthy adults taking creatine in line with the 3 to 5 gram range most studied. 
Let's talk practical use. You don't have to load creatine. Loading gets your muscles saturated faster, but taking three to five grams daily gets most people to the same place muscle-wise within a few weeks and tends to avoid the water weight swings and occasional GI discomfort that some people notice with big front-loaded doses. And contrary to what some believe, controlled studies in hot, sweaty environments suggest that creatine doesn't dehydrate or cause cramping. And in fact, just the opposite, actually showing fewer cramps and heat related issues in those who are supplementing with creatine. As far as the form to choose, though there are many different formulations of creatine on the market, creatine monohydrate is the most studied, it's the most effective, and it's the most affordable option out there. So it makes sense to keep it simple. The fancier versions haven't shown any real advantage, they're often just more expensive, or they're filled with additives that we don't really need. For those of us in our 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond, here's the payoff that matters. The greatest benefit show up when creatine is paired with resistance training in the form of better strength and better muscle quality, which translates into the potential for better function in day-to-day -day life. In healthy adults at standard doses, there aren't any red flags that scream kidney injury or damage, and the upside for muscle and performance may be very significant as we fight off age-related muscle loss. Now, if you happen to be a doctor, I'll speak directly for a minute because one of the most common frustrations that I hear from men and women trying to stay healthy as they age is that their questions about creatine are often dismissed offhand. Many patients are told flat out that creatine is unsafe or it's even dangerous or to just stop it. But here's the thing, creatine has been on the market for more than 30 years. That's longer than many doctors have even been in practice and it's not likely to go away. And if the brain and neurologic research keeps trending the way it's trending, interest in creatine is only going to increase in lockstep with a growing aging population. That means our patients are either going to take it with us or they're going to take it without us. In regard to their health, patients want partners, not gatekeepers and not parents. And in that regard, partnership, if we'll consider it, can look pretty practical. It might sound like, let's look at your goals, let's look at your meds, your baseline labs, and let's look at them together. If creatine could help keep your legs strong enough to climb the stairs and carry groceries or to remain in independent for a few years longer, then let's try this in a way that's safe, cautious, and measurable. It means starting with a plan, documenting blood pressure, metabolic panel, a urine albumin to creatinine ratio, and acknowledging up front that creatinine might rise a bit with supplementation without the kidneys being damaged whatsoever. It means considering cystatin C, if that lab's available, when the numbers don't seem to match the patient sitting in front of us. It means starting with what's been studied and what the evidence suggests is safe at three to five grams per day paired with strength training in addition to a follow-up plan to assess strength, energy, and lab work and not simply a reflexive no based on myth or your personal bias. But partnership also means nuance. If someone has known kidney disease or they're on nephrotoxic drugs, have uncontrolled hypertension, edema, or abnormal urine findings, spilling significant protein, then we slow down, we individualize, and sometimes we do say no or at least not not yet. If someone has gout or a history of kidney stones, talk hydration, watch for symptoms and side effects, and decide together. If someone is a vegetarian, frail, or losing muscle, discuss how creatine fits into the bigger picture of protein intake, resistance training, sleep, health maintenance, not as a magic pill, but as a useful synergistic brick in an overall bigger foundation and health strategy. From your side as a patient, advocate for yourself. Bring your goals to your next visit. I want to stay strong enough to ride my bike or continue gardening, or I'm worried about getting frail, losing my independence, or falling. I've heard about creatine. Can we try this together? Ask for a plan and supportive collaboration. And if your doctor is unfamiliar with the creatine literature, share with them what you've read. There are over 55,000 supplements on the market today, and no one can keep up with all of them. But most of us as doctors, believe it or not, want the same thing that you do, to help you live longer, stronger, and to live better. As a general rule, the majority of evidence to date suggests that creatine is safe for healthy adults when used in the range most studied. For many of our patients, especially those lifting weights and exercising regularly, the benefits may actually outweigh the downsides by a wide
wide margin. That's not a pitch. That's just what the data is telling us. In collaboration with our patients, ideally it's evidence over anecdotes, partnership over paternalism, and a plan of synergistic cooperation rather than simply a blanket no. There are links to several articles below for your convenience. I hope this has clarified some things for you. If you want to hear a little more history about creatine, watch this video next. Thanks for watching and please share this video with someone you feel would benefit from watching it as well. All the best to you and I will see you in the next video.